From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. You? You are investigate? Hello? What'd you say? Who is this? You are investigate Ricardo Amerigo? Yeah, that's right. I'm investigating the Ricardo Amerigo matter. Who are you? Hello? Hey, listen, do you have some information, a tip on the case? Who are you? Hello? Hello. Hey, what is this, a gag? Yeah. Or is this supposed to be some kind of a cockeyed threat, a warning for me to get off the case? Believe me, this is no gag. Hello? Hello? Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. To the Philadelphia Mutual Liability and Casualty Company... Following is an accounting of further expenses incurred during my investigation of the Ricardo Amerigo matter. Expense account item 10, $21 even, for drinks, for me alone. And believe it or not, I'm cold sober. But the least I could do was buy one at each of the bars on the list Pete Corbin gave me. A list of all the places Ricardo Amerigo used to hang out before his disappearance in a South Jersey swamp. In spite of all the circumstantial evidence pointing his way, I still wasn't convinced Corbin had engineered an accident to kill Amerigo. Pete had also given me a list of Amerigo's closest personal friends, three of them. I told them I'd see them later. Meanwhile, I hoped to learn something helpful from the places where he apparently spent most of his time during his last few months on this earth. But the result can pretty much be summed up by the last bar on the list, the Hangover Club. Cost you 80 cents. Here. Keep the change. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it's just like I tell you, mister. You come in here, buy a few drinks, sit and drink them, leave. Well, uh, didn't he ever talk to anybody? <laughs> Not even me. Just sit here and get plastered. Told one of his friends to come in and drag him away. Who? Did you know any of them? Oh, sure. Willie Elliott, saxophone player at the Crystal Room. Oh. Who else? Jerry somebody, fiddle player. Jerry Goldsmith. Yeah, they're on my list. Huh? Anybody else? No. Uh, oh, yeah, wait, well, sure. His agent, Pete Corbin. Yeah, that's... Hey, if you knew that, why'd you ask me? I've heard the same thing exactly 20 times so far today. Yeah, well, I'll say this for them. They must have loved Amerigo. They might have fought and argued with him when they caught him in here, but it was all for one thing, to try and straighten him out. But, mister... He was too far in. Yeah. Yeah, shame for a talent like him, concert violinist, to hit the skids the way he'd done, but nobody couldn't seem to help. The story had been exactly the same in every bar on the list. Apparently, the only friends, the only associates that Ricardo Amerigo had had were those Pete Corbin had named. Expense account item 11, 110, cab fare to the apartment of William Elliott over on Callowell Street. Same story. No new names of friends or even acquaintances. He and Corbin and Goldsmith and the old English violin maker, Eric Snowden, had known Amerigo for years, good times and bad, had all tried to help him, straighten him out, were deeply grieved over his death. Item 12, 570, cab to a suburb called Lenark to see Jerry Goldsmith, where I'll admit I expected to get the same story, the same names, no more, no less. This time I took the Amati violin with me. Who are you? I'm Johnny Dollar. Oh, yes, you called. Come in. Friend of Pete Corbin's, you said. Uh, Sit down. Mr. Goldsmith, I'll get right to the point. I'm an insurance investigator, and I came in... That violin case. That that looks like Ricardo's. It is. And and the Amati? Yes. Oh, thank God. I found it down on the South Jersey swamp where Amerigo's car plunged off the bridge. It had been lying there, hidden by the marche for several days. Is it all right? May I see it? One reason I brought it along was so you could substantiate identification. I make no bones about it, Mr. Dollar. I coveted this violin like nothing else in the world. I've played many fine instruments, strads, guanieri, even this, my stainer. I see. But Ricardo's Amati, it... There was something between that violin and myself that could exist for no one else. Not even Ricardo Amerigo when he was at his greatest. And when he started his 
It's a terrible downfall. You uh, wanted it even more, huh? Yes, more than anything else in the world. Enough to kill for it? <laughs> Mr. Dollar, I should kill you for even thinking such a thing. I love Ricardo. Okay, sorry. The fact remains, somebody sawed through a steering arm on his car. Oh, I still can't believe that. No one could have killed Ricardo, no one. Only three others beside myself even knew Ricardo these past few years. Corbin, Elliot, and Eric Snowden. Pity him, feed him, clothe him, try to fight him away from the liquor that had ruined his brilliant career, yes. Even hate him at times for what he'd done to his life, but murder... I'm sorry. May I? Sure. It, uh, is the Amati. Yes. Yes, I know it as well as I know my own. May I play it? Sure. What's the matter? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Mr. Dollar, it, it isn't here. The tone, the, the brilliance, the response, it isn't here. Something's wrong. You're sure this is the Amati? Oh, of course I'm sure, but something's wrong. Something's happened to it. It, it, it isn't the same. Well, you think the dampness of the swamp might no, have done... No, no, you can see. It's, it's all right, but... But it isn't. Well, I, I don't know anything about violins. Well, there are no cracks, no marks, no damage. Uh, even the sound post. But you're sure it's Ricardo Amerigo Zamati? Yes, yes, I told you so. I couldn't possibly be mistaken. But something is... Mr. Dollar... Well? I, I don't know. You know something? I don't either. I'm afraid I left Jerry Goldsmith rather abruptly and in a rather distressed condition. But I had plans, and the sooner I could carry them out, the better. Item 13 on expense account, 420, taxi fare back into town at the shop of Eric Snowden, violin maker. The only man who'd been allowed to touch Ricardo Amerigo's Amati, except, of course, for the music store owner who'd cleaned it up after I found it in the swamp. Yeah, it was possible he had done something to it that would destroy its tone. But for some reason or other, call it a hunch if you like, I hope not. Snowden's shop was located on a colorful little side street, really not much more than an alley called Eisminger Street, right in the middle of one of the busiest sections of the city, surrounded by skyscrapers, office stores, and all the traffic that goes with them, this one little alley. Except for Snowden's place, the tiny buildings packed side by side are all residences, left over from years gone by when this was a residential section, and still unspoiled by the bustling activity around them. Thank you, Mr. Romandy, and I'll be sure to hear you at the Academy of Music Saturday night. Uh, sir, sir. Mr. Snowden? Uh, yes, I'm Eric Snowden, but that, that violin case... I'm Johnny Dollar, I fought you. Oh, please come in. Uh, Mr. Dollar. That's right. It's Ricardo Amerigo's. It's been found. Uh, please let me... Mr. Snowden, I'm an insurance investigator. Part of my job has been recovery of this violin. It's possible loss was the most heartbreaking thing I ever contemplated, but you found it. I uh, think so. You think? I don't understand. Well, here, take it. Examine it. Yes, but uh, not here. Come, we'll go up to my workroom on the second floor, where I can check it thoroughly. I'll lock this front door so we won't be disturbed. Now, come with me, please. I can't believe it. It's so wonderful you found it. It would have been a terrible loss to the world. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, you're not a violinist yourself? No. I'm afraid the only violin music I know is what I hear in... Uh, now, here we are. Oh, quite a shop. Most of the finest violins in the world have been here, one time or another. The Stradivarius of Yasha. It was quite a shop. The, violins the walls of were lined with fiddles Prince in the making Christ, and with tools. Some familiar and I some that were... Hey, wait a minute. Hacksaws. A couple of them small and delicate, Boy, but one a big one and dirty. And As Eric Snowden turned away to open the violin case, I ran my fingers over the blades. Yeah, there 
Just grease on one. Axle grease. Uh, now here. Well, Mr. Snowden. Yes, Mr. Dollar. This is Ricardo Emerigo's violin. You're certain of that? Eh? Do you think that I, of all people, wouldn't know? Mr. Dollar, aside from Ricardo himself, I am the only person who has touched this magnificent instrument for years now. I must confess, I resent your least question of my judgment. All right, I'll be honest with you. I don't pretend to know much about violin, so I had somebody play it a while ago. Sacrilege. All right, be that as it may. It didn't sound to him or even to me like a $30,000 violin. And whom did you permit to lay hands on this priceless instrument? A friend. Should be horsewhipped. Only an artist. A great artist should be permitted to handle a thing like this. But I suppose you uh, understand that, Mr. Dollar. I don't suppose you... Well, go on. Mr. Dollar, someone has tampered with this. Oh. Of course it doesn't sound right. Did this friend of yours presume to be a violin maker, too? What do you mean? The sound post, the placement of the bridge. Of course it doesn't sound right. Now, now why does somebody have to... Do you want to answer that? Uh, no, no, let them wait. This is more important. No wonder you or your friend or anyone else question the validity of this instrument. Hey, whoever that is down there, he really wants you. Look here, a simple adjustment here and here. Oh, bother. Go ahead, I'll wait. All right, I shall be right back. It was a quick suspicion when I spotted the hacksaw on the wall, and I couldn't forget the warning over the phone. While Snowden waited on his customer, I poked around the shop some more, looking for goodness knows what, and I found exactly nothing. No doubt Snowden was telling the truth. Until I started to sit down to wait for him, and as I pulled over a stool, I knocked open the door of a cabinet next to his workbench. I started to close it again, and then I saw it. Hanging there on a hook was a violin. I grabbed it out of the cabinet and held it under the light beside the one in Amerigo's case. I held them up together. It was unbelievable. The shape, the color, the markings, nicks on the little pegs you tune them up with, the spot of stain on the scroll, even a tiny, almost indiscernible scratch on the back, an old pencil mark on the inside near the label. It was impossible, but it was true. These two violins were absolutely identical. Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's final intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, well, it's a wind-up. But believe me, a wind-up with a real twist. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Sam Dawson, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs>